I'd like to call to order this regular meeting of the Common Council of the Town of Quartzsite. Um, not a regular meeting. Well, okay, keep it down, folks, please. This is just a business this is, meeting. This is a business meeting. Get it over. And Joe, you're not in charge. I am. Okay, we'll go forward. Um, the invocation. Aaron, would you please give us an invocation, please? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you today, Lord. We thank you that we could gather, and Lord, we just thank you for the freedom that we have to gather. And Lord, I pray now that your will be done, Lord, that you bring peace to this town, and Father, that uh, this would just be a wonderful place to live and to raise our families. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Got it. I to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Now your white pearls are not being cast in course one. Roll call, please. Mayor Foster? No problem. Vice Mayor Cowell? Here. Council Member Anderson? Here. Council Member Winslow? Here. Council Member Kelly? Here. Council Member Lukitson? Here. Okay. Approval and <clears throat> amendment of the agenda. No, it's not the consent. Oh. It's approval of, it's just a new step that oh, we okay. have. Yeah. That we have a motion to approve the agenda. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Ayes have it. Okay, reports and announcements. Uh, community report. Um, Council Member Anderson. Good morning, and I want to thank everybody for coming. Uh, I'd just like to remind everybody, turn off your cell phones, please. Uh, at this time, I don't have a community announcement. Okay. Power outage report. Council Member Winslow. Uh, thank you. Uh, this is long overdue, as uh, we're all aware, we had a real problem with the power outage here a couple of weeks ago. And uh, I, I think we all owe a big thank you to our uh, police department 
fire department, uh, especially to uh, Isaiah 58 and the Assembly of God Church and some of the other churches in town uh, for helping out with water and uh, a cooling off places. Uh, both, the, both churches do now have uh, cooling off places, so if we ever have a situation like this again, which we will, uh, you need to be aware that you can, you can go to either one of those churches and uh, you can cool off. In fact, uh, uh, at least at one of them, uh, you could stay overnight if you had to. We're working on uh, finding a place uh, in one of those places where you can take your pets, uh, cats and dogs. Uh, we haven't gotten together that, we still have to firm, firm that up. But, uh, uh, and APS just did an outstanding job with dry ice and, uh, and helping us out generally. Um, so I think everybody th that helped out deserves a big hand. Uh, we have a lot of work to do uh, on this situation. I wasn't aware of it until I went out. I was running around looking for at-risk people, and I found I found a guy or a woman over there at the apartments. She said, "Well, this all sounds great. I was passing the word out that you can go, you can get water, dry ice, whatever." She says, "But I can't drive." Oops. So. We need to get together. Uh, Pastor uh, Hobby and uh, Pastor Bruce, been, or Mike and Bruce, were, were talking about it, and Linda, his, uh, Mike's wife. Uh, so I, I think that's going to be our next step. We're going to have to uh, get together and sit down and see who can do what, who does what best, so this doesn't happen again. We were lucky this time. We were really lucky because of the fine job of the police, the fire department, and uh, even River Ambulance. Uh, did, and Isaiah and, and the Assembly of God, but uh, we need to tighten it up a little bit, so anyway, that's all I wanted to say about that. This other announcement is kind of sad because I've been personally involved with these folks for going on two years, so I'm just going to read this. This is from uh, Roger Williams, who's the president of Willpower, and it says, it starts out, it is with great sadness that I must inform you of the closure of the Paw Power Animal Shelter, effective 1 October 2011. Willpower Incorporated can no longer absorb the cost to continue shelter operations as well as absorb the cost to start, build, and operate a new shelter at the north end of Quartzsite. At the heart of the matter is the cost, $23,000 to complete the environmental assessment study, which is mandated by the Bureau of Land Management. Please do not interpret the closure of the shelter as a failure to complete its mission, but rather an emphatic declaration of need. During the shelter's 18 months of existence, it took in 160 animals that were abandoned, abused, or no longer wanted. The animals came from all segments of the community, including the Quartzsite Police Department, and as far away as Lake Havasu City. Additionally, 12 other animals were immunized and altered at a greatly reduced cost to the members of the community. The number of animals that passed through the shelter gates demonstrates the real need for such a facility and an animal, animal control officer in the Quartzsite area. Last, I would like to thank those who contributed to the success of the shelter. At the top of the list is Ms. Patty Patton. Her passion and love for the animals made it all possible. She and her team of volunteers raised the shelter from a dirt field to its current configuration in a matter of weeks. All completed with no monetary support from the state, county, or local township. Thank you to the members of the community that gave generously of their time, money, and materials in order that the abandoned animals of the community would have shelter, medical care, and food. Your efforts will not be forgotten, and you will always be in our hearts and prayers. And that's uh, from uh, uh, Roger Williams, President of Willpower Incorporated. 
also like to add a little caveat. Uh, it is necessary, obviously, uh, we have to close the shelter for right now. We have two very large trailers that are going to be full of uh, some of the accruiterments that we used out there at the shelter. And we're looking for a place where we can store them probably for a year, maybe up to two years, until we get another shelter uh, approved. Um, so if you know of anyone who has any property they would like to uh, let us use uh, or donate some property that is zoned for this, <laughs> we'd, we'd really appreciate it. Patty and Roger have done just a super job out there. They did it on a shoestring. They put a lot of their own money into it. Uh, some of the other folks in town have contributed financially to it, but uh, it's just, it's, we, we, can't, we can't maintain it anymore. Uh, the other thing, like I say, is it's going to be probably, we're going to try to get it up and running again as soon as possible. But uh, uh, anyway, for right now, you know, it's going to be really tough. We're going to have to start taking animals either to Blythe, or you will, or Lake Havasu until we get this situation uh, uh, a little more uh, well-defined. Um, Anyway, I regret this moment. <laughs> this really bothers me because uh, I, I was one of the folks that, that worked out there. And uh, I know there's some others out there here that did too. So, But it's not the end of the world. Things are going to get better. Anyway, that's all I've got for now, ma'am. Uh, cassette agenda. Do I have a motion? Yeah, I make Make motion to approve one, two, and three on the consent agenda. Second. It's been seconded. Any discussion? Okay, um, we'll go to the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes carry. Next is new business. Um, Al Johnson, but I need to recruit myself on any discussion on this item. Um, so um, I'll just. Barbara, if you could appoint one of the other council members to act as the chair. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Bob. Can He's you good boy. Chair this. Uh, thank you, Barbara, Excuse me. and uh, members of council. New business item one: public hearing and um, approval or reject ordinance 11-09 conditional use rezone for CUP 11-2 HTR Holdings LLC. 310 Plymouth Avenue North, and that's changing the zoning from suburban residential SR to commercial C2. And at this point, before uh, I ask you guys to approve or not, I'd like to refer this item to Martin Brandon, the town attorney. The, uh, Mr. Johnson asked me to look into. Uh, whether there was a law indi indicating how far a gun shop had to be from a school zone. Um, Arizona's laws are pretty uh, liberal when it comes to gun possession and ownership. Arizona law require, uh, prohibits the possession of a firearm on school grounds. Uh, there's no other law that uh, would prohibit uh, possession of a firearm within any distance of a school. We do have a drug-free school zone, but we don't have any such thing for firearms. There is a federal law that was passed in 1990, but it was declared unconstitutional in 1995. So federal law does not prohibit the possession of a firearm in a school zone. So uh, there's no state law or federal law that would prohibit uh, this establishment from being located where it is. State law preempts uh, towns' abilities to enhance gun laws. So we can't make a, an ordinance that says that there's a 100-foot buffer around a school zone because that's preempted by state law. State law specifically says we cannot do that. 
Um, there are things you can do by zoning that you can't do by law. So if you decided from a political standpoint that this uh, establishment is a bad idea, you could refuse to change the zoning. Um, but be advised that if the only reason that you're re uh, refusing to change the zoning is because you believe it's too close to a school, you do run the risk of an argument that you're nevertheless supplanting state law with regard to, to gun ownership. So um, if you decide not to grant this, it ought to be for a reason other than its proximity to a school. And for the council's information, I went out this morning and um, we, we uh, ran the wheel over it approximately 327 feet from, this, from the two closest points, which would be the southeast corner to the southwest corner of each property. And that was about 327 feet. Um, and so that you know, uh, there is also two commercial buildings acting as a buffer between those two, which would be the police department and the United States Post Office Annex. make a motion to approve ordinance 11-09 conditional use rezone CUP-11-2 HTR holdings LLC 310 Plymouth North Avenue changing from suburban residential to commercial C2 second I understand that this area is industrial. Um, the of the area are industrial. Yeah. On, on the um, east side of the street, it's industrial. On the west side of the street, it's a commercial. There's a, a, an existing C2 property, and this one is adjacent to that existing, and that would be West Coast Realty. general comment. I know that the kids go from school up to the uh, baseball, football fields up there all the time. I see them, you know, crossing back and forth. Uh, as far as I know, we've never had any problems in that area, but they never had any problems in Finland until the other day. So I think that's on everybody's mind. I don't know what we can do. Apparently there's nothing. Well, considering that uh, state law permits you to have a firearm in a park. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's so, true. Yeah, good point. You know, I, I think the state legislature, with regard to the, the gun aspect of this, is, has tied the council's hands. I see by the minutes of the last uh, planning and zoning meeting that the uh, board did recommend this be uh, passed. That, that's correct. Mr. Johnson, this has been pretty well vetted by the town and planning and zoning and it's been approved and it doesn't seem to interfere with anything in our ordinances or anything. That's correct. Um, it will, the building will still go through the plan check process and it will still be um, submitted to the fire department for approval of the fire suppression system that will be adequate for the amount of ammunition to be stored in the vault in the back of the building. Okay, another question. Letters were sent out to the neighbors as usual? 300 foot letters, yes ma'am. There, oh. there was one, one letter that came back and I believe that's in your packet. You believe, the one letter, what? There was no letters actually returned. Um, we had one phone call, and she, after explaining the um, what was going to happen and where everything was going to put, she was fine with it. That was the only one we received any kind of comment back from. There was 13 letters, because there's 13 copies within 300 feet of that property. Okay. This is open for the public. Would anybody... Good morning, everyone. Seeing that it was pretty well vetted by everyone that I can 
see in the, the way the states then go on the far as and that, you know, if the planning and zoning didn't see it, and the people objected came to the planning and zoning meeting, we're kind of second guessing. Yes, ma'am, you have something? Um, I have a few concerns about the zoning change. Who are you? Um, you oh, I'm Jenny Mills. Um, I was a residential builder for 30 years, and I own Al's RV Park and permanent resident full time. Um, have you all received the letter I put in here? Have you received the other um, regulations and notes I placed in front of Alex's desk there for the zoning and the, the growth plan area, the conditional use permit regulations and the definition? I'm sorry. Definition of the SR zoning. Turn it up. You gotta put it Turn in it your on. mouth. You gotta almost speak right into it in order for it to carry. Yeah. Okay. Is it on? No. Yeah, it's on. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Um, I just wanna go over this first page real quick, and then I'll I'll uh, discuss the zoning and everything with you folks once Alex passes out the pages. Um. I understand the state laws and federal and everything about not having guns within school areas, and that's fine. That's not, you know, it's, it's a major concern, but it's not the only issue I'd like to discuss. Um, there's a bus stop within 500 feet of the, the proposed zoning change. Um, you guys have a great growth plan in Portsite. This area you've done wonders with. and. The growth plans are put in motion for a reason, and it's to buffer different districts and keep things kosher on one side or the other. Um, and to change the zoning on this one particular lot and is just, to me, wrong. Um, the property next door, West Coast Realty, um, according to the maps, I couldn't get online because the website was down. Um, but according to the maps, it's not been zoned differently. It, I could be wrong. Um, and that is more like a home business anyway. It doesn't look like a, a business of any sort. It looks just like, you know, a regular house that has a business in it. Um, I thank Al for doing the measurements because I didn't have a chance to. 327 feet away from a gun shop and a shooting range is quite scary with the given times and, the, you know, there's crazy people in all of the world, you know, you don't know. And one thing I do know, uh, Portsite seems to attract a few of them, you know, <laughs> just like anywhere else. Um, you know, these people that were notified of this change, um, from recent, ex or from past experience, most of them look at a letter, they don't want to be involved, especially if they live out of state. What's it concerning me? And quite frankly, you know, we're all getting older, and in 20 years, most of us won't be here anymore. I'm trying to look out for our, the town's future and the people, uh, our children and grandchildren, that will ultimately move to Quartzsite and say, hey, my mom and dad were there, and they really liked it, so let's go there and build a house and raise our kids there. And the zoning for this, the west side of Plymouth, is designated for that type of living. It's residential. And, um, you know, if you change the zoning, it's going to create a domino effect that you won't be able to change back. And quite frankly, doing business on a side street, I've been in business my whole life, and I don't quite understand why a business would want to be on a side street. This, this street is wonderful, especially since you did all the improvements on it, and it should remain that way. Um, there's so much, so much property for sale in this town that's commercial, one and two. And I envision the north end of um, Central Street with perhaps a small bowling alley or a small recreation type thing or uh, sporting wood stores, restaurants, that kind of thing to bring people into town. They see that when they come in. Um, I, I know I would like to ask you if I could have a couple minutes longer. I know, but there's some very important issues I'd like to bring up to you, and I'm trying to go as quickly as I can. Yeah, get down and get, get 
Yeah, oh, okay. Um, all right. Let's see. Hang on one second here. Uh, you, we, you know all about angry people, what they can do with guns if they're coming out. Um, this area has been designated, and oh, okay, on a conditional use permit. In order to approve a conditional use, the town must make a finding of fact that the establishment, maintenance, and operation of the use of the building applied for will not be detrimental to the public health, safety, peace, and convenience, comfort, and general welfare of persons residing or working in the neighborhood. Can any of you assure me that by changing the zoning, it's not going to be, for a fact, that there's no drawbacks and no risks that are going to be taken with this? I, I don't know how any of you could. Um, one question I'd like to ask to bring to your attention, because it is important, because the town obviously is going to generate money off of this business. Have the Mr. Ropeman and Mr. Thomas um, given you a projected gross income? For revenues that Portside will ultimately collect tax on this business from? No, I don't um, believe they have. Okay. Um, maybe you'd like to do that because changing the zoning for one person, one business, when there's plenty of other places in town that this business could go, and I have nothing against the business per se, nothing at all against the gun shop. It's where the location is. Um, West Coast Realty is right next door. Um, Barbara, are you part of West Coast Realty? Yes, I am. Okay. Um, here, you won't be able to vote, right? Or if you do, you can do it without prejudice. She's not allowed to vote. Okay. All right. Um, has this company ever tried opening this kind of business here or anywhere else? I'm going to have to cut you off with this. Okay. Wait, wait. No, please don't. Please, please. This is very, very important to this town. Okay, I'm not trying to ramble on or cause grief or trouble for anyone. I'm not on anyone's side or anything like that. Um, the thing is, it can be somewhere else. It, it, if I walked into a marijuana shop or a sex shop, does that make me a bad person? No, not any more than any of you going into a gun shop. So, this business wants to locate there because the ultimate motive is to save money and make as much money as they can. Everybody involved, that's the way it works in the United States. Um, why would this gun, it all comes down to business. Why would this gun shop be any different than a sex shop being put there? I don't think you'd approve a sex shop right there, right? It's over. So, it's over. if you put this building here, it's, over. it's, it's not good. But let me get on to the, the most important. Um, According to the growth area one, these uses are compatible with the current uses of adjacent land, which includes the town park and town hall. The area is zoned. Ma'am, ma'am, could you wait just, just did you did this go before planning and zoning and you state your case there? No, I didn't even know about that meeting. Um, I have one more thing to read and I'm done. And it's the regulations. Okay, what I was going to do was was make a motion to uh, grant you additional time. Oh, and, oh okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I know. Well, I'm trying to. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead and finish, but try it. Oh, I'm trying. Believe me, I don't want to be up here any longer than I have to. Um, according to the SR zoning. Oh, can get additional time? Other people can. Please, sir. Fire, can please. I just speak and get done with this? Uh, if you interrupt me, my mind is gone. I won't recoup. Um, an SR zoning is, it says here in the codes that the, this district is intended for low density residential development consisting of all types of residential dwelling units, including permanent, temporary, conventional, mobile, modular, etc., etc. Regulations are designed to preserve the safety and open space characteristic of the district and to ensure the compatibility of limited agricultural uses with residential use. Regulations are designed to stabilize and protect the residential character of the district, to promote and encourage creation of a favorable environment for family life, and to prohibit all incompatible activities. Land use is also composed of recreation, such as parks, 
um, religious and educational facilities as basic elements of a balanced neighborhood. That's what you have in this area. If that zoning should ever be considered for change, yeah, I'm not going to have to cut you off. Yeah, it's, no, it's no, not, it's I, I not, no, no. It's, we've been thing, over this, we've all got your, yeah. But this is, this is stuff have, I didn't have time to put on here. Yeah. We have to move on, we yeah, have Mr. Kelly, stuff. I know, no. I, I, I've got about two more minutes. No, 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 no. That's it. No. Yeah. Well, the thing is, okay, I'll, I'll, can I add my final notes? Okay? Two words. Yeah. 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 On a final note, the decision of the please. The final Mr. Mayor. Uh, He's not a mayor. Pardon me, uh, Mr. Kelly. She has been given an extended time. She's definitely made her point. I for one appreciate you coming up and expressing your, your emotion about this. You're very sincere and I do appreciate that. <coughs> But ma'am, your time is past due. Just yeah. final note. No, no. it's Just past no. due. No, no. ma'am. I'm sorry. No. It's past due. Okay, the decision you make today will, will, will be forever on that street. If you change it, it's going to be commercial district. Yeah. 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 All right. Jennifer Jones, resident. I would like to say that if the town feels that this uh, zoning change is in any way arbitrary, capricious, or unequal, uh, as in the case of Norby Felton, who sued the town over zoning changes that have been found to, to have merit in his argument, the town could open themselves up to yet another lawsuit. Also, I, um, I'm not even sure legally, and I'm sure it will be ruled upon, whether uh, changing this meeting to 7 a.m. makes your actions on this legal. I do know for a fact that a formal complaint was filed with the Open Meetings Law Enforcement team regarding holding these meetings at 7. I can understand why members of this council who carry guns would like to buy their ammunition closer to town hall. However, if you continue to act with these zoning changes. Thank you. Let's stick to the agenda. You're Point starting to do an editorial. And hey, she's got her four minutes. Sit down, please. Else. Please sit down. Point of order. Who are you? One more outburst, and I'll ask you to be removed. Are you there now? Yeah. 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 the agenda, what you wanted to say, and make it short. If you make this zoning change and continue on the path that you have gone, I have two words for this council. Voter referendum. Here, here. Here, here. Aloha, my name is Hygieia Half Moon. As a mother and a grandmother, I love the idea of a gun shop being between the police department and the library and in proximity to Town Park. Because in a state where we're allowed to have guns, that requires a sense of responsibility to our youth. And I can't think of a better way to do it than have it all right along that road with the pretty walkway. Thank you. Anyone else? I'm Frank Lauer, uh, owner of Courtside Ivy Park. I am for uh, seeing more commercial employment. As I understand, the entire Plymouth is master planned to be commercial. And what difference does it make about a gun shop being there when we can all legally carry a loaded gun if we want, as long as it's showing? Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Frank. Thank you, Frank. Anybody else? You don't have to be showing now. Oh, is that right? Michael Glines, resident. My only question is, I heard that there's going to be a shooting range in there. Is this building going to be built according to code for a shooting range? Anything that would go in there would have to go through planning and zoning and be approved. It has to meet the same requirements as anything else that we allow in town. That's what I'd like to know. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, if I may, Mr. Johnson, go ahead. phase one of this project is to put in a sales um, a sales floor and also a storage facility. Phase two, if the project um, so 
you know, so if they so desire, phase two would be a shooting range, and that is um, that is not proposed in phase one. I have not seen the master plan uh, really in detail. Is all of Plymouth Road in the master plan to become industrial? No, no ma'am. Officer and Council of uh, a meeting I'm not sure the status of. Uh, the video may show well, on the replay that um, the Council needs training. The council needs to read zoning maps. I'm not opposed to this uh, shop. I mean, I'm pointing out though that uh, we had a Councilman interrupt. We had a Councilman state that Plymouth Avenue is industrial. Uh, we need to be reading those maps. We need to be educated as Council people. Thank you. I believe the statement was is all of Plymouth Road industrial. You should know that. And that was explained. We went over this and it was explained that this has all been to planning and zoning. There's been letters sent out. Anybody wanted to object when they came to the meeting, they could have objected. When it gets to us, it's just the last stage of the thing. And personally, if it hasn't been through planning and zoning and been vetted the way it is, I wouldn't even bring it up to discuss. Other than that, we'll go for the vote. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those that against, say nay. Nay. Did you get the count? Three or one? Three or one. Number two, I'll turn it back over to the vice mayor. Thank you. Okay, we have uh, new business number two, Al Johnson. This is approve or reject resolution number 11-10 declaring as public record that certain document filed with the town clerk and entitled the 2010-11 amendments to the tax code of the town of Quartzsite. Okay, which is... Uh, all, all this resolution does is make the, uh, the tax code public record, which if it's approved as an ordinance, it will be. Going through this, both totally, it's incorporating the stuff to do with medical marijuana. This doesn't do anything except make the next agenda item a public record. Which, again, if the next agenda item were passed, it would become a public record anyway. So, this is just a this is as much a formality as anything is ever just a formality. It doesn't really do anything. Okay. Is there a motion, please? I make a motion. We approve. Resolution number 11 10 declaring as a public record certain documents filed with the town clerk and entitled 2010 11 amendments to the tax code of the town of court site. Second. I have a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carried. Number three, Al. Item number three, approve or reject ordinance number 11-07, adopting the 2010-11 amendments to the tax code of the town of Quartzsite by reference, establishing an effective date, providing for severability, and providing penalties for violations. Okay, uh, Martin. Okay, um, I was a member of the audience the last time this came before the council, and there was some information provided to this council which... Uh, was provided either by people who are unable to read a blended amended ordinance or they were just lying to create controversy where there isn't any. Um, I would like to go through the uh, ordinance and state what it does. 
what it does not do. The first thing that it does is uh, it says that things that are made as food that contain marijuana as an ingredient are not food. What this means is you don't get the tax exemption for food. So, uh, sorry folks, if you're buying hash brownies, you've got to pay the taxes on them. <laughs> That's the first thing it does. Right. Second thing it does is uh, it defines uh, medical marijuana uh, by referring to the statute that creates the medical marijuana statute. So it just, it makes our code comply with state law with regard to what medical marijuana is. Um, the next thing it does is it says that uh, uh, things that you would use to smoke marijuana, uh, medical marijuana, are not prosthetics. Now when we think of prosthetics, usually we think of artificial limbs or things like that, but the definition of a prosthetic includes uh, insulin needles if you're a diabetic, um, if you have sleep apnea and you use uh, one of those CPAP machines, any durable medical equipment is a prosthetic. So it's not just a, a, an artificial limb. Um, but with this regard, sorry folks, uh, your bong is going to be taxable. Okay. So, oh my God, it, it's not, that. even though otherwise it might fit as a description of a prosthetic, it's not. There are several places throughout the code where um, the letters ARS are added to the code in front of a section. This is to make sure that people who read this code realize that you're referring to a Arizona revised statute and not another part of the same code. So it used to just say, uh, pursuant to section 9-436.05, uh, if you thought that that was in our code, it's not. If you didn't realize it was a state law, you might not know where to look for it. So that sort of thing is added in here repeatedly. Uh, the other thing that's added in here repeatedly is a change of uh, the date January 1st, 2011 to January 1st, 2017. That's the, uh, the sunset date for this ordinance. So that's how long, this, unless it changes in between, which it almost certainly will, uh, that's how long this ordinance will remain in effect and these taxes will be collected. Um, the next thing that is changed, I'm sure applies to loads of people in town. If you're a corporation and you are a subsidiary of another corporation and that other corporation owns 80% of your business and you lease a building from another corporation who is also a subsidiary of the same corporation that you're a subsidiary of, and they're also 80% owned by the umbrella corporation, we're not allowed to tax that lease. So basically, if you lease to yourself, the state will no longer tax those leases. Um, and the only reason that you would tax, uh, lease to yourself is so that you can gain another uh, tax benefit. So if you get a tax write-off, for paying a lease, as long as you're paying the lease to yourself, you also get to write off the taxes on the lease. So that's nice if you're a corporation. If you're a bank or a creditor and you foreclose on a house and you gain ownership of the house, uh, you're not required to pay the property taxes on that. It doesn't impact the uh, court side because we don't have property tax, but it does impact the county. Um, so the banks don't have to pay property tax on property that they foreclose during the time that they own that property before they sell it. They are required to pass on the taxes, the delinquent taxes, to whoever buys it. Um, the upside to this is if you're a bank, you don't have to pay taxes, even though you get to show that you have the asset, you can use that as collateral if you decide to get a loan. Uh, the downside to the town and the county is that for whatever period of time the house goes unsold, they don't collect taxes. So, uh, helps banks, hurts counties, and towns if towns have. Uh, the last thing that it changes is, uh, and this shows just how important it is that you pass this, okay? Back in 2009, the state legislature said that towns and cities can no longer tax personal property, and by personal property uh, we mean chairs, desks, things that aren't real property. Um, in 2009, the legislature said you're no longer allowed to tax those things if they belong to a school district inside the town. Now, nobody changed their town ordinances at that time because nobody takes the time to write these themselves. We have the League of Cities and Towns that do this for us, and that saves us a lot of money. So, from 2009 to 2011, this wasn't in anybody's code, and yet none of the taxes were collected because the state collects taxes, the town does not. So what happens is, uh, if you don't pass this, is nothing. Okay, the, the state's still not going to collect these taxes. The town isn't going to get any share of it. It's not going to have any impact on anybody's life. 
Um, what it does, though, if you do pass it, is it brings our ordinances in line with state law where uh, all of the taxation policy has been taken out of local hands and put into the state legislature. So it's not a bad idea to pass these things, but if you don't pass it, obviously it doesn't matter because if two years later we can go back and pass something that we should have passed in 2009, clearly it doesn't make a ton of difference. Um, so, does this increase taxes? No. It does not increase taxes. It does create the ability to tax hash brownies and bongs. Uh, so when medical marijuana becomes a reality and we have a dispensary, uh, you know, we'll probably get uh, a little piece of the uh, marijuana pie, which is uh, not food. Marijuana. Not food. <laughs> so you have to pay tax on the marijuana pie you get. So you get that. Um, so I guess in a way you could say that that increases taxes because it's a tax where there was none. Um, but until something is invented and sold, it wasn't taxable. So it really doesn't create a new tax. It's the same sales tax that you already pay on other tangible items. Um, it does reduce taxes, but not for anybody that is of any importance probably to anyone in this room, unless, unless you all lease to yourselves. Don't know if you do. I don't. Um, or if you're a bank. So if you're not a bank, you're not a corporation, it's really not going to help you out tax-wise. might hurt you a little bit because you're not going to get the benefit of those taxes. Uh, but it doesn't raise taxes on anybody. It cuts taxes on some very nice people who probably don't pay taxes anyway. Um, and uh, it means that marijuana is not food and bongs are not prosthetics. That's what it does. Nothing else. Thank you. Okay, we need a motion on this, please. Make a motion. We approve ordinance number 11-07. Adopting the 2010 11 amendments to the tax code of the town of Quartzite by reference to establishing an effective date providing for suitability and provide penalties for violation. Second. I have a second. Go to the vote or any discussion? Okay. We'll go to the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed say nay. Ayes have it. Okay, number four, Al. I would like to say that uh, we have a correction on item number four, and this would, um, the, the item as read is to approve or reject to purchase a 50K Cummins generator. This is actually a 50KW Onan generator for Town Hall. Do I have a motion? Make a motion we approve to purchase the 50 kW Oman generator for town hall. Second. Um, if I if I may, um, included in your council package, um, I, I'd like to give you. This is a 50 kW generator made by Onan, which is a major uh, name in the um, generator field. Uh, most recreational vehicles um, carry Onan generators. Um, we do not necessarily have to put this um, at town hall, but I, I, um, going back to the first um, portion of the meeting, um, a, as everybody well knows, power does go out. Now, we have the ability to um, purchase this for approximately half of the going rate. Um, this is at La Mesa RV. They offered it to us. If you go through... If you go through your package, um, you'll see that uh, most of the generators of this size are, are going between $11,000 and $15,000. Um, they've offered this to us for $6,500, um, and it, is, it has 2,700 hours on it. Um, the generator that we have out at the water treatment plant has approximately 7,000 hours on it, still going strong. Um, this this 50 kW generator will have the ability to run a, a couple of 400 amp panels. Um, it, it may be set up to be um, portable. We might use it at the police station. We could use it at Public Works. We may use it at the COFA plant. There's several reasons to purchase this, um, and and um, we. 
we don't have a specific use for this right now, but um, certainly we can set any building up to backfeed the, the panels and run in case of an emergency. You said this is as portable as it already on wheels and that? Or? It's not portable now, but it could certainly be when we when we lift lift it, we can set it on a trailer with wheels and keep it on a trailer, or we can bring it to a location and set it. It's going to be up to the council as how they see fit to use it. But it could be used somewhere for like a tool station or something like that. Absolutely. This is, this is the size generator that most people would rent from a rental yard in order for them to do a, a, a function. Okay, right now the police department does not have a generator. That's a true statement. Okay. Or our, right, or our, our water. The, the wastewater treatment facility does have a generator. I don't think COFA station... The well does not The have well one. does? It does have one. Actually, it does. I'm sorry. Um, Public Works is now being fed from across the street, um, but only the gas pumps so that we have fuel for emergency vehicles. So there, we certainly have lots of uses where it could go. Yeah, it probably makes sense to hook it up here because then you'd have cooling here, keep this place running. Move the other one to the police department. And you're in business. That Joe. would that would be for the council to decide. Yeah, we um, just a, a question and a comment. Uh, does this do we get a maintenance contract for this? No, but we have a mechanic that is diesel rated. Huh? There's we have a mechanic Jesse okay. Newton that is diesel rated. It's a not an issue. And we at one time. Recently, we were talking about swapping, you know, generators with, with what? With the town, or was it? Well, as I understand it, um, this generator would run our cooling, which the current generator does not run. And if we took the generator we have here and move it down to the police department, they would have their cooling and their computers, their software, everything they needed, and we would as well, so that that way people could come in the lobby and sit too. You know. We may not be able to run the library and all 11 air conditioners, but we could certainly run three or four and you know we could provide a cool zone. Pat, did you have? Okay, uh, has someone from town inspected this generator? Um, once we have approval and if there's an interest from council I will take the mechanic over there and we will go through that and we will get back to you but this is a machine that's uh, been run very infrequently over the course of time. You ever, you ever thought about my own army surplus? Yeah. Just say, well, I'm not open discussion. Yeah. Okay, now that does bring up a question with me. It's been run very little. Um, uh, is this gas or diesel? This is a diesel. A diesel. Can't there be problems with generators if they're not run very often? Um, normally, if you are a, 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 let's say the town of Quartzsite, um, we fire our generators once a month, all year. Um, you, you usually keep these generators. You fire them once a month, you check your fuel, and, and so that um, they don't have stag stagnant fuel in, in the system. Um, an emergency generator, usually if you have that, you have a maintenance program. Okay, now is this generator here in town or is it one of their other... It, it's here in town at La Mesa RV. Okay, but they're not here year-round. No, but they have a person that um, is there for the facility maintenance. Okay. <clears throat> Any more discussion? We'll go to the vote. Have we? Uh, can we did, tell have the, we had a motion yet? Tell the folks how much this is going to cost. Uh, it's sixty-five hundred dollars. Okay. Any other discussion? It's in the budget. You can get one half that way. Okay. Have you done the? No, but uh, 
Have you checked up on that? Okay. We'll go to the vote. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed? Ayes carried. Okay, number five. Now we go. Vice Mayor and Council, this is uh, a point of replacement for council member, uh, a replacement council member to fill the remainder of former council member Lazarga's term. Okay, do we have a motion? I make a motion that we table this until we get a chance to, to meet these people, talk to them, um, and reset it. Can we do that? What I'd suggest that we do. Um, just, just a term of art, okay. When you table something, you just set it aside for a moment, and you get right back to it. Oh, okay. Um, if you'd like to like refer to this to a work session, okay. then that would be the appropriate uh, motion to make, is, is you'd move to refer this to a work session and then schedule the work session uh, so that you'd have time to spend with the candidates. And, and, uh, okay. I make a motion and we refer to a... Uh, however you want to call it a... I guess a work session. Okay, we have <clears throat> a motion has been moved that we uh, made that we uh, move this to a work session. Uh, do we have a time? Do we need to set a time? Uh, if, yeah, the council should set a time for that. If if you want to do that right now, if not, um, you can have staff determine what would be an appropriate time because they can probably. Uh, talk to the candidates, which I wouldn't suggest that the council do. And then uh, once they've talked to the candidates and found a time that they can all be available, uh, then they can uh, confer with the council to see if uh, that would be a time that would work and we could do notice. And the staff set like three different dates and we can respect them now. Okay. All right. So we need to go to a vote. All those in favor of, of moving it to a work session, say aye. 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 All those opposed? Ice carry. Okay, that was the last agenda item. Um, I move to adjourn. Thank you.